What's up, everyone, and welcome to the This Is Tattoo podcast. I am your host, Eric Ayala, and today we have Dan P. Dan P. hails from San Diego, California, and he is the owner and operator at Seven Seas Tattoo. Man, that came out really cool, huh? <laughs> it kind of sounded professional, right, for a second? Yo, broke. I did, I'm not in doing it anymore. I broke character. I broke my professional podcaster character. I'm breaking the fourth wall right now. I'm looking straight in the camera and I'm saying, hey, you, thank you for listening. You right there. You sitting in your car, maybe. Or maybe you're watching this on YouTube. I don't know where you consume this podcast. I'm just glad you're consuming it. You know what I mean? Man, it's it's pretty cool. I get to connect with you for a second. I hope you like the sound of my voice. I don't. It's really hard for me to edit this podcast. <laughs> I kind of want to hire somebody to edit it for me so that way I don't have to listen to myself talk. But that's neither here nor there. What is here right now, today, we have Dan P. And I'm really excited for you to hear uh, from him. Um, Dan is such a sweetheart of a dude, you know? Really soft-spoken guy. Um, I know it was difficult for him to do this podcast. And I really appreciate uh, I really appreciate him for doing that. You know what I mean? Man, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool being able to talk to your friends and kind of get them out of their comfort zone. I have a few people that I've talked to that are like, man, I don't really want to do that. And I'm like, I know, dude. And it's totally cool. If you don't want to do this, I get it, you know. But I do think that this, uh, I think these conversations are important. I think they're important for other tattooers to hear. Um, you know, a lot of the themes I've been finding in these podcasts is, is just this extreme love and respect for tattooing. And um, that's what I want to share. I want to share those stories. I think these are also important for our customers, our clients, our friends, people that are on the outside of tattooing, um, people to get like a, a better understanding of um, the care and effort we put into tattooing. You know, I had somebody say the other day, man, I have a different understanding and appreciation for Flash after listening to your guys's to your guys's conversations to listening to this podcast you know what I mean it's those kinds of things that I want to accomplish with this podcast also I'm just a silly entertaining kind of dude I mean anybody that's ever worked with me I like to entertain so naturally this this you know having these conversations doing these these things I feel like I would be a good because I love tattooing and I also understand uh uh i don't know what else i don't know why mike why am i qualified to do this who knows am i qualified to do this i don't know am i qualified to do anything who knows the most important of which am i qualified to be a dad i hope so the little human i'm raising is pretty cool right i think so at least those of you that know her i i think you agree with me Right, so so let me do my podcast. Why are you attacking me, camera? Why are you why are you doing this? Why are you attacking me when I'm trying to intro this sweet episode with Dan? What are we doing here? Yeah, just sit there and be quiet. Don't don't get into my head and make me start questioning everything, man. What is that, dude? Why would you do that to me right now in the middle of me recording this pot? Okay, I'm. I got to just, let's just get into the conversation. All I really wanted to say was thank you, camera and person listening. Thank you for, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for the feedback. If you've given me any feedback, uh, got some really good feedback. I did record a few of these episodes, got some feedback that I will be using, you know, in like three episodes, I'll be using that. So sometimes we talk about people and maybe you don't know who they are. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, now that uh, now that people have listened to it, they're like, hey, you got to kind of like maybe explain who some of these people are a little bit better. You know? Yeah. No, I get that. I'm, I'm trying. Hey, hey, don't don't you start with me, man. You're getting in my head again. You're making me think that maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Why do I question everything that I do? Gosh, I got to learn how to not be so hard on myself. This episode of This Is Tattoo is brought to you by Tattoo Paint Roll. Uh, with Tattoo Paint Roll, we are given some dice with, uh, you know, different imagery on the sides of them. 
and you roll them and then you try to create a design with the images it gives you. So you'll make these like weird mashup uh, drawings. Maybe not so weird. Maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you don't like weird drawings and that's cool. Just because I like weird stuff doesn't mean you should too. Maybe you like a drawing of a nice, well-painted, evenly painted wall. Maybe you like to look at a canvas of a, of a single color, which actually that's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe that's what you like. Maybe you don't like weird. Maybe you, maybe you like, maybe you just want to roll. Maybe you just actually should just get regular dice and just roll one through six and just really just draw the number that it gives you. You know what I mean? Well, if you're that type of person, maybe these tattoo paint roll dice aren't for you. You ever wonder about that? Maybe you're not the demographic. You ever think about that? Maybe you're not the person that is targeted, and that's cool. You know how many times I see on, on Instagram, like, uh, sponsored ads, and then I see people just, like, shit-talking the company? I'm like, yo, it's not for you, right? Why would I need this? I don't need this. Oh, well, I don't need to have your comments on my sponsored ad that I paid money for. How about that? Huh? You ever think, like, maybe this isn't, everything isn't about you? You ever wonder about that, huh? Tattoo paint roll. Roll the dice. Draw a cool image. Dan, if you hate this ad, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll cut all that if you don't like it, bud. Um, buy the damn dice. Get get on your Instagram and go look at tattoo paint roll and, and, and just look at what they do. I mean, I mean, man, everybody creates these sweet designs out of these dice. And if you pick yourself up uh, up a few, I guarantee it'll get your creative juices flowing. Maybe you don't like your creative juices flowing. Maybe you like, maybe your creative juices are more like a pond. It's just, uh, you know, stagnant water. Maybe you should ask yourself why you don't like your juices to be creatively flowing. That might be a question for you, but I don't know, right? Anyways... I think this uh, this intro has gone on for way too long. Here is the podcast with Dan P. I hope you enjoy it. Um, there we go. I love you. And I mean that. I really, really love you. And I want you to feel that. I want you to understand that. Okay. Here's Dan P. Be a little easier on yourself. I'm going to try to. Dan Pryor? Yes, Eric. <laughs> Ayala. Uh, <this>. Ayala. <laughs> Ayala. So you can fucking pronounce your last name. No worries, mm-hmm. dude. Um, so who taught you how to tattoo? That's a good question. I never I never had did a formal apprenticeship. Okay. I just kind of a uh, hardcore kid, punk rock life. Was uh, from a young age, just stoked on the idea of tattoos without any, like, not even knowing why. Yeah. And I just really drawn to it before you know, from a really young age. Yeah. You know, like, how old how old do you think? Well, I mean I remember like being exposed the little exposure at like probably ten, eleven, twelve to tattoos, just seeing tattoos. Wow. Yeah. Seeing tattoo shops. Mm-hmm. And even then being like, Whoa. It seemed like a magical thing. Yeah, for sure. And uh yeah. Then just uh kind of stumbled across some equipment. Started started getting tattooed, uh, it's like the day I turned eighteen, my eighteenth wow. birthday. Yeah, got another one, six months later. Sick. And then after the second one, I was like, ooh, the light went off. I was mm-hmm. like, I could do that. Really? Well, I mean, I thought I could. <laughs> Did you actually have that opinion? Like you were like, I think I can do this. It you know, nothing. I I didn't have any kind of ambition or drive to do anything before that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um more the opposite like anything i could avoid doing i would do yeah yeah but I, you know i was uh, definitely not, like creative spirit i mm-hmm. think um i was the the kid that could draw in school even though looking back i was like oh yeah and then how that translates to tattooing it's completely different yeah it doesn't matter yeah yeah so um yeah i just uh being 18 19 stumbling across some equipment and just started tattooing friends. That's cool. Yeah. So so then you just like started to you like got a kit or whatever or you made your own machine or how'd you So the way it worked out, uh this is the first 
house that I ever lived at other than my parents. Mm -hmm. It was in Syracuse, New York. And uh, I had a friend who was like, or not even a friend, just someone that I knew. It was a a friend of mine. It was her boyfriend. He had uh, lent a friend of his some money Mm -hmm. to get some tattoo equipment. He was a really, like, talented artist. He started a bunch of tattoos on people in, like, the area and never, like, had no idea what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So he basically repoed the stuff from him. Mm-hmm. He's like, here, I'll, you know, I, I lent him $1,200 or $1,500, which was like an insane amount That's of money. That's an insane amount of money right now. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it, imagine like, you know, oh, this yeah, is the early 90s. Yeah, when was or, this? Yeah, exactly? this is uh, 94. 94, probably. dang, yeah. So a little while ago. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, he repoed it from him. He gave it to me. He's like, here, I'll, you know, give me 600 bucks and tattoo me. I'm like, okay, well, I'll tattoo you. Yeah, great. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, did some tattoos on him, and like two weeks later, he's like, oh, what's, where's, I need my money. It's like, oh, shit. And so basically, like, the same thing happened. Yeah. He repoed it from me. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a good deal for him. Yeah, he keeps yeah, getting tattooed, yeah. and he he's gets getting free, free yeah. bad tattoos. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> so you can't get those just anywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah, you have to go somewhere special. Yeah, exactly. For that. Well, it, yeah. it, had, it had a very authentic look, too. Yeah. You know, just can't fake that look. Yeah. Yeah. I know. A lot of people try to. Exactly. You know? Yeah. That's it, <laughs> No, but it's, that's cool, man. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. So you are originally from New York then? Uh, born in Florida, but like high school and stuff in like central, central New York, like Syracuse, outside oh, Syracuse, Syracuse, New York. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's crazy. So how, uh, so what was your journey then? You Did you work in any shops in, in Syracuse or? No, I kind of, that's where I definitely started and tattooed just real like no clue what the hell i was doing for yeah, for mean, sure yeah. it had to be uh at least eight nine ten months something like that yeah and then uh i mean i've had I, i've loved to travel from an early age so I, I was uh traveling down to florida and was popping between new york and florida for a while mm-hmm. and then started actually tattooing in uh st petersburg florida oh wow okay and then how long uh what was the first shop you worked at then in st petersburg uh it was called uh what the fuck was it called yeah no it's yeah. okay yeah uh, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're all called downtown tattoo for me. I've worked a few downtown tattoos. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I think it was downtown tattoo. Might have been. Yeah. yeah. It cool. was actually downtown tattoo. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And so how did you even like get the job? Did you just go in like with a with a portfolio, or did somebody have to vouch for you? Or not like, not did... at all. It wasn't even like that. It was kind of a weird situation. So a, a good buddy of mine, he was uh, my roommate, uh, the guy that I went down there with from New York. He was a real outgoing character, mm-hmm. and he worked at a. a like a car wash or something. Yeah. And the guy that owned the shop is like, oh, you got tattoos? He's like, oh, yeah, my buddy Dan did my sleeve. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, well, that looks pretty cool. You should have him, like, give me a call. I'm looking for, like, artists. <laughs> yeah. So this is in Florida in, like, 95 or yeah. 96. It was, yeah. It's a long pre, time ago. Pre any sort of, like, online presence oh, or God, anything Oh, God, yeah, like, crazy. way, yeah. way before yeah. any of that, yeah. That's crazy. So then you just got like some dude met the owner of the shop and was like, yeah, this is like my boy. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he kind of like, like reach, reach out him. to me. And yeah. in Florida, like at the time it was like, these guys were like, it was a totally different world. Yeah. Like this guy. So he had, he had a shop that was pretty established. Um, but then he had his like hands in other stuff too. He had, mm-hmm. he had a couple other shops Yeah, or he would like, you know, it was just he was like a businessman mm-hmm. you know so uh, he was, he was like, just trying to make money he wasn't a tattooer then he all. wasn't a tattooer at no. all okay um yeah and he would just uh yeah he had different different ventures we're like oh like oh me and this guy opened a shop together it's like i'm looking for someone like to work three or four days a week in tampa and mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I'm that guy. Yeah, sick. So, yeah. yeah, I'm down. I've never worked at a tattoo yeah. shop. I just kind of want to work somewhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so to him, the shop was just an investment. It was like well, he didn't really he, care. Or... He he had his one shop that I worked at eventually. 
Okay. So um, he had the, his, the, like primo shop. Yeah. Then, so yeah. So I was a like kind tester. of like the like the C. Yeah. I was on the, that C list to start with. Yeah. And uh, you know, which was cool. It was definitely uh, saw a lot of uh, things there and. Yeah. yeah, so what, like what kinds of things uh, happened while you were you were there at the, you know, like did anything notable? How long did you work there? Oh, man. It, I don't feel like it was long. A few months, maybe. A few months. I made it a few months. Yeah. It was like, I worked with one guy and mm-hmm. it was in the, like, it was a strip mall in Florida <laughs> in the mid 90s. Yeah. So it was a rough, I'm not like rough in a tough sense, but just like weird. No one's wanting fucking, to get tattooed. Yeah, people are like shopping for shoes and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, if you see anyone. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean, there like wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of people around. I mean, you might you would do a little work, but he was definitely more experienced than I was. But he was just like not the kind of guy that you would want to hang out with, or yeah. it sounded like he was creating like great art every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all worked with yeah, we've all worked with those dudes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and he's like the like he's the older like, you know, more like. You know, well, this is this is how you do it because yeah. this is basically this is my shop. I don't own it, but I'm I'm the yeah. man. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, this is how tattoos yeah. are supposed to be done, or yeah. like this is how it goes. Yeah, I take like the first four walk-ins, and then you get my scraps when yeah. I get tired. Definitely. You know? <laughs> yeah, I remember the first uh, being there and doing the first like custom tattoo that I'd ever done. Oh wow! And being paid. In change, yeah. in change, paid in quarters. It was like yeah. seventy dollars in, in quarters. quarters. In, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Yes. I had a I had a friend t- uh, pay me like uh, you know a few hundred bucks uh, in ones, and I, I was he, I, I finished get I finished tattooing him, and then sorry not to make this about me, but I, I finished tattooing him. And he's like, I gotta go to the bank. I'll, I'll, I'll bring your cash. And and I was like, okay. Well, I gotta get ready for my next one. So I'm sitting there drawing for my next one. And immediately, I just see dollar bills like shower me. <laughs> that's why he, he had to go. Be, that's why he had to go to the bank. Yeah, <laughs> he thought it'd be funny. What a dick to pay me a bunch of ones. <laughs> and then I'm like sitting there like picking up all these ones off the ground. And I'm like, right. what? I'm not a stripper, dude. Right. I right. just like tattooed yeah, you. Right. Like this isn't funny. Like I'm legitimate now. <laughs> You're right. You're having flashbacks from your stripping days. Yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm not even in high heels. <laughs> yeah, I'm better than this. So then, okay, so so from uh, from downtown Tampa, was it? Uh, that was in St. Petersburg. Okay, yeah. from so downtown right, yeah, Tattoo right, right, right in St. Petersburg. Yeah. You went to Tampa then? Uh, I, I did work, spent some time in Tampa. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, uh, so what was the first, like, shop where you actually felt like, because I know a lot of people... Uh, you know, you kind of, you know, maybe you, you do a few tattoos on homies and like you do all this and then you kind of build up your reputation. Then you get to a shop like, like the one in St. Petersburg. When did you get to that shop where you feel like things started to change for you, where you started to understand what tattooing actually was? I mean, tattooing was, it was kind of, it was pretty elusive to me for a long, long time. Sure. Um, I mean, I think that were, there were different times for sure. Yeah. Um, th- there were points where I would see like rays of like light mm-hmm. or I'd have days of clarity. Yeah. Or I'd be like, oh, shit, I've got it. Or like, oh, this is how you do it. Oh, man. Yeah. And then I would do something and I would just get like knocked on my ass. Ass. Isn't that crazy? It's yeah. fucking nuts. You yeah. got that idea. You do one nice tattoo. Not even nice. Passable. Yeah. Passable. Yeah. And then and then all of a sudden you do another one. It's humbling. And you just got it's knocked f- on your ass. Yeah, yeah. It dude. kicks the shit out of you. Yeah, oh it's man, totally it's so like, good though. So humbling. But yeah. the fact that you even see that, like that's like miles ahead of a lot of people because you know it's it's hard to understand, like, man, you're not really figuring it out yet. Yeah. Well, I know? mean you have to have I mean, to, ideally have some self-awareness yeah it's yeah well a lot of people i feel like uh it, it's kind of hard to get to that point i struggled with that for a long time i thought i was awesome like if i was as good as i thought i was in the first few years you know like i would be amazing right. i just listened to all the people that i i did nice tat or passable tattoos on and then they were like oh you're fucking awesome dude i mean it's uh, so much of tattooing to me i think it's uh kind of fake it till you make it mm-hmm. you know even if you don't have 
the confidence right. or the ability right as long as you can like struggle through and just you know persevere yeah. it takes a lot of perseverance for yeah. me anyway no i think it, that's i think that's true for everybody man especially like if you i think you should really not like what you're doing you know what i mean like a genuine kind of like oh that was okay you know like that's that's going to keep pushing you right because then you get to that point where you're just kind of like, I'm just going to keep doing this because I think this is awesome. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, dude, I was like scared. <laughs> like, I was at a point, I remember like, you know, a, three years in, say, and be like, fuck. It's like, I'm not, I don't feel like, maybe I'm not, this is what I want to do, mm-hmm. you know, but I don't have any direction. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Yeah. But you just I kept you got to keep on going. Yeah. You know. You're like this is what I want to do, but yeah. I'm not doing it the way I think I want to do it. Yeah, it doesn't look how yeah. I want it to look. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. God, and then like the anxiety that that causes, you have like bad dreams. Oh, dude. I don't it know messes if that's with your that's... sleep, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you you have like these nightmares about all the bad tattoos you did. You know, yeah. my very first walk-in was a was to fix a star. You know what I did? I ruined it more. Like <laughs> you, you, you passed it down the line, <laughs> yeah, dude. And, and when I got done, like the dude that was teaching me how to tattoo, he just had this big old smirk on his face. He's like, he's like, did you make it better? Because <laughs> he didn't. He fucking starred you. Yeah, he starred me. Yeah, I got starred. <laughs> you <get> starred. <laughs> But yeah, dude. And then, uh, so so when did you think like you started uh, started actually getting to that point, or, or or who did you come into contact? I feel like it's a lot of like you come into contact with somebody, kind of changes your mind about a lot of things. Right. I think that happens a lot in tattooing. And so I'm wondering, for you, who was like one of the first people where you're like, oh, that's that's it. I want to, I want to like figure out what they got or, right. you know, stuff like that. I don't know if it's good to like compare yourself, but I think like that's kind of a, kind of a thing. Like for me at least. Definitely like being a real young tattooer yeah. and working with say at the first like real shop in mm-hmm. Florida that I worked at where everyone was actually doing, you know, good professional tattooing mm-hmm. there you, you know because you go into a tattoo shop and not get a professional tattoo yes unfortunately even in this day and age yeah you know it's almost the roll of the dice like mm-hmm. what the fuck <laughs> you know yeah uh, so um you know there were you know, working with people that i was like oh man like i may have been like it really impressed by their work but mm-hmm. it wasn't something that necessarily resonated with me yeah you know Mm-hmm. It, to me, attached so much of it, it was more about being comfortable with myself, mm-hmm. you know, and like being in the industry mm. for long enough, you know? Yeah, no, I get that for sure. Um, yeah. Cause not that there were, because there were, I mean, there were lots of people that I worked with or, or traveling or like, you know, just every shop, there's someone, you know, there are things that there are things, always things to learn. Yes. With tattooing, you're never going to stop learning. Ever. For sure, yeah. You know, if you're stop, if you when you stop learning, you're just you're dead. Yeah, you're nothing. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So you did you did you understand that from a very early age? Like, there's something to be learned from literally everyone I come into contact with that does this. I I think I did. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. great. That's and, insane. Yeah, just kind of picked picked little things up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and uh, I mean, I lived in Tennessee for a little while in Memphis. Um, and. Another, seriously, downtown tattoos everywhere. They're all For real, the place. you li- you worked at another <laughs> downtown tattoo in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, and that was definitely you know working with some characters, uh, like so like kind of outlaw biker type, just yeah. crazy shit, crazy stories, crazy characters. Were you like a outlaw kind of biker kind oh, of look dude? At me. I mean, no, I know, but I'm just saying like <laughs> like would did that appeal to you at no, all? No, like not at all. Yeah. No. no, it was just like the young like early 20s, you know, maybe 21 at that time. 
And what year? So this is like, is this shortly after you left all these? Like, Th- did you was, travel very was, quickly? This was late 90s. Okay, this was late 90s. Yeah. So you, okay, so you went from tattooing your homies in Syracuse at like 94, you said? Or? Yeah, yeah. And then you went to St. Petersburg for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was in Tampa for a while. And then you went to, to where after that? I was, well, I was, I, like I said, I, I love to travel. Yeah. I love just, just any kind so of So you were just experience. bouncing, bopping kind of, around. Kind of popping around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I had these little circuits. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah, so I was in Tennessee for a uh, while. Six or eight months at one point. Did you do like conventions or did you do Not like that? God, okay, so no, hell no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah, conventions used to be like such a like you had to be like invited or you had to be like like you had it was like yeah. this thing if you did conventions. Yeah. Now I'm like, dude, anyone you just pay the seven hundred dollars for your booth for yeah. a day and yeah, you're you're good. Um. So then Tennessee was the shop that you felt like that's where you stuck around a little bit or, or? Uh, no, no, it was just kind of, it was uh, kind of like a pop off between, uh, in between New York and Florida mm-hmm. at one point. Mm-hmm. And, and that, and that was, that was pretty early on in my, in my, in my stint. Yeah, the first few years, yeah. right? Yeah. In the first few years. Yeah. Yeah. And what was the first shop that you actually like stuck around at for a little bit at least? The spot in, in St. Petersburg. Oh yeah. Okay. T- t- Tattoo Emporium. It was called Tattoo Emporium. Tattoo Emporium. Yeah. And so you did. So you went to Tennessee, and then you went back to St. Petersburg to Tattoo I, Emporium. Yeah, I would, I would pop around. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, at Tattoo Emporium, how long did you work there? It was the kind of thing. It was like very loose. It Everything was super, was super loose. loose. And yet, yeah, luckily, you know, they. I was always, you know, a nice guy, and be like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Okay, cool. Well, if you're back in town and you want to work, there was always work. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember days at some of these places back in the day doing 10, 15 tattoos, you know, on a normal day. Insane. Yeah. Fucking crazy. You open the door and there's like 20 people that want to get tattooed. Yeah. And there's a shop full of people that are tattooing that want to tattoo them. It just keeps on going. And it wasn't like that every single day, but lots of days it was like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've heard a lot from like the generation that uh, it was before me, you know, it, it'd be like, it wasn't uncalled for to have like, like they were kind of like, oh, if I, you know, did like $2,000 in tattoos, that was like a, you know, average day. That was a good day. I'm like, what? Where'd that money go? God, I remember the first day I ever made $500 and I was like, what the fuck? Like, this is more money than like. This is crazy. Dude, I still hold on to that. When <laughs> yeah. I tattoo $500 yeah. worth, I'm like, oh, yeah. what? Yeah. To draw on people? Yeah. To have yeah. fun? Yeah. To like have these nice conversations yeah. with other... Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so, so shops aside, at what point do you, did you feel, did you ever have somebody like take the, you under their wing and kind of like, kind of guide you and, and you had that like, you know, kind of like... Uh, a kind of like a mentorship or did you have anybody that you consider like a, a mentor? Um, not a real That's crazy. mentor. I, don't, I mean, I really feel like I kind of just did it and I was just too stubborn to quit. Yeah. I had nothing, you know, nothing else. Yeah. Like, yeah what going. else are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. insane. Okay. So let's fast forward a little bit. Where, um, at what point did you start, uh, working like with people where you're like, damn, like these guys or girls have it figured out. Like, right. what, what was there like that turning point where you realized like, okay, like, well, I think when I when I left Florida, I came out here and uh, I had a a friend from Florida that uh, was working out here. He was working at Lucky's. Yeah. And he's like, oh, come, you know, come out. So I came out once, I think, and did a guest spot. Or he was sh- he was actually sending me photos of what he was doing. I was like, well, it's a lot different than what you were tattooing in Florida. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I came out, and then he's like, oh, you should come and, like, you know, come work out here. So I, I came out and worked for, like, you know, six or eight months. Oh wow! Before yeah. Dave left San Diego and went to uh, Northern California, mm-hmm. and that was definitely that was cool. Did definitely. you work with Dave? I did. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't on a daily basis, but I mean, he was. It was his shop. And so, so 
for people that don't know, which Dave are we talking about? Uh, Dave Gibson. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so what, what kind of, what kind of conversations would you have with, would you have good conversations with Dave or was he kind of like, kind of like that guy that was like, he he was a little bit more like hands off or it, it it definitely uh, depended on day to day. He would have like good days or he'd be like, Oh, what are you doing? You know, like, or, you know, Oh, I'm, you know, who's up or, you know, like, Oh, I'm not like, if he was like in the, in the mood, in the zone, mm-hmm. he's like, "Oh, I'm doing this. Like, yeah. I'm taking this." And because how old and was watching, Dave back then? You know, I'm not really sure. He wasn't. He wasn't super. He wasn't old. super old. Yeah, right? he was like, yeah. maybe like mid to late fifties at that point. Yeah, but he was Dave Gibson at yeah. that point. Yeah, and he'd been around. And, yeah, you know, he had, talked about stories. He had yeah. he had stories and yeah, he had the history. The yeah, bike. and to the shop, fuck, incredible, incredible. Yeah, lettering. I mean. But to me, when I came out here, like, you know, tattoo lettering names and stuff, it's just like, in Florida, you were like, tracing out of a book. Right, yeah. And here, you're, like, you're actually, you're drawing, you're drawing. That's a drawing, nice. yeah. Which is like, I mean, that's the norm now, but back then, when I moved here yeah, from uh, the East Coast, it, that wasn't the norm. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was something I was like, whoa, this is fucking rad. And I was like, it had a look. Mm-hmm. And still, when I see lettering like that, that's why... That's what I think of. Yeah, you definitely know when it's like picked out of a book or printed off or anything like that as opposed to somebody actually writing it. Oh, Even sure. if it's like not as good, like there's something to it. Well, there's some magic like handmade, sure. you know? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy, man. So was he, he was like obviously painting like an animal and, and uh, stuff like I that. I mean, the shop was crushed. Yeah. For every single thing in there was his. Yeah. Uh, other than like... The, the flippers of the old Flash. And even in there, you'd see stuff yeah. from, like, Mike Wilson or Frank Lee yeah. from, like, the mid-'90s yeah. that was, like, in fucking colored pencil, I think. <laughs> and it was, like, original shit, I'm pretty sure. That's insane. And I was like, what the fuck is yeah. this? But everything else in that place, everything on the walls was his. Dave. And, God, man, it's like... And it's all so good. Oh, it was all oh good. Gosh. And the way that it worked together and the borders. It's just beautiful. That's one of the things that, man, I really have tried to look at a lot of Dave's stuff because you're just like, man, this dude knew how to put together a sheet. You yeah, know? I mean, I, I remember when, one time he was like, he was out for a little while. Like, I hadn't seen him in like two weeks or something. Oh, excuse me. And he comes into the shop and he had like all these like just oversized like sheets of dragons. He had done like six or eight or ten of these dragons that were just insane. Like line drawings all just Dave style dragons that he drew with all the backgrounds and yeah. How are those guys so prolific? How do they do that? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to find. <laughs> I know. Yeah, if I can get myself to paint like one day a week these days, you know, definitely. I feel like it goes in waves. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I get that too because I'll I'll bust out like three sheets of flash real quick, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. just do that. That yeah. was easy. Yeah, I'll, can... I mean, other times I'll do like two huge paintings over like, you know, a couple weeks. Yeah. Or like, yeah, they knock out like five little ones in a week. Yeah, and then. Yeah. But it's different when you're just like, I'm going to do like a back piece every day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, what? Yeah. What is that? Yeah. It takes a different kind of, different kind of approach, man. I don't, I don't know. It's Definitely. hard to, it's hard to tune into that, man. Um, that's crazy. Okay. So you, so you worked with Dave, we work for Dave for how long, how long were you at Lucky's? Just the you, six months or did you come back? For- um, that, that was about... It was less than a year. Okay. And uh, one of, uh, I'd, he was uh, someone that was really close to it. It was Dave's, like, only real apprentice. Mm-hmm. His name was Sid. Yeah. Uh, great guy. He was yeah. real, real close with him, and he yeah. ended up passing away. And uh, just things kind of, like, changed after that, and I was just, like, wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So I left left there. Yeah. And then a few, it was like a month or two months after that, Dave and uh, Debbie moved to uh, 
Northern California. Yeah. I think they did a little. They were in Pismo for a minute. Tiger Rose. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think on their way, on their way up. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Cause Dave just like, uh, my homie Chewy owns this, this shop called Tiger Rose. Have you, yeah. have you met Chewy before? I mean, I know of Tiger Rose. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever been in there though. Um, yeah. So he was, he was over there for a little bit, but, um, uh, I don't even know how long, but they had like originals from, from Dave. There. Right. It, it's almost like his footprints as he, as he travels around. You just, I'm, that's tattooing like, though, Did isn't Dave, it? Dave worked here for a minute. Oh, he's here for like a week, but we have this whole <laughs> rack of, of sheets. Right. You know, like yeah. he's insane. Man. That, that's tattooing though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, yeah, you come sure. in like, Oh, you know, Oh, you know that's, Joe? that's my favorite thing. Yeah. That's why I look at flash talking points. Yeah. You know, when I go into a shop, I don't know anybody yeah. there. I'm like, Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I know that guy. Oh, I know Ricky Tat. Yeah, yeah. He's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, man. Um, okay. So, so from Lucky's, where did you travel? So you, did you stay in San Diego then? Like pretty, pretty exclusively after that? Uh, yeah. Um, so I, you know, after that happened, after my buddy passed away, mm-hmm. uh, I kept a place here and I, I traveled around a little bit. Not really even, just kind of, I mean, not taking time off, but not like too concerned yeah. about anything. I was still pretty young at that time. How old were you about? Oh, fuck. I feel like it was like mid 20s, like mm-hmm. 26 maybe. So 25, hit you 25 26. That hit you pretty so hard. So this is in uh, 2001. So yeah, I was like, yeah. Mid mid twenties. Mid twenties. Yeah. Uh yeah, they kind of like you know, it's what you know, losing like a friend no, for, I get that like for the for first sure. like yeah. time and you know not really having any direction at all either. Nothing that I ever really and never having experienced well, anything like yeah. that before. Yeah. 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 That's rough, man. Yeah. And then uh I worked at a shop out here on the beach for a little while. just kind of Killing some time, mm-hmm. doing some tattoos, did some traveling, and then uh, opened up here at Seven Seas with the guy that invited me out to work at Lucky's. His name was Milford. Milford? Yeah. Milford Barnes? Yes, the same. <laughs> okay. Dang. I didn't realize that. That's oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah. So Milford, um, Milford invited you out to Lucky's. Which Milford is an incredible tattooer, Definitely. wild, wild dude, T- um, talented guy. Yeah, um, that's crazy. So he invited you out. You worked under Dave Gibson for about a year. You worked on the beach for a little bit, and then you and Milford decided you were going to open Seven Seas. So he <laughs> he was actually living in the spot. Of course he was. With yeah. his <laughs> he's right now living in his tattoo shop. <laughs> exactly yeah. somewhere. Yes. Yeah. So then, yeah, so, so Milford told you, hey, I want to open a shop at my house. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. He's yeah. like, yeah, well, the, they were t- tattooing uh, the management here, uh-huh. him and Jackie, his ex. Mm-hmm. And uh, she tattoos as well, incredible tattooer. Um, and he's like, yeah, they said, uh, why don't you just open a shop? And he's like, okay, well, why don't I? And so he <laughs> calls me and. We just kind of pooled what little resources we had, mm. and yeah, crazy. Didn't didn't take much, and yeah. just yeah. So then, how long did you guys, you and Milford, own the shop together? I've been here for seventeen years now. I would say maybe the first like six, maybe seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ford was kind of involved. Yeah, and then it was just you owning the shop. Like you just you just came to own it together just by yourself yeah i mean yeah. That, there were times uh even back in the day it was dude, i was here when i was young younger mm-hmm. and i would be here six days a week and yeah. it was just me lots of days yeah you know come in maybe at 11 12 or even one i'd be here till 10 o'clock yeah you know just long days and just just kind of building it and just yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. doing it mm-hmm how uh, how old were you when you when you and Milford first opened this shop? So that was two thousand three. Okay. So it's like what uh, twenty mm-hmm. nine thirty. 
mm-hmm. something like that. So then, 2009, 2010, it was just you for a little while. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. So who was uh, who who would come who would come work here with you? Or no, I mean, your... it was me for a. L- there were always other people. It would don't. I don't want to be like. Oh. I was the guy. That no, was no, no. I'm not. I'm not all, saying, no, yeah. I don't think that's what the idea is. You know, just I'm, like you were like the the mainstay, and then there would be other people that would kind of like yeah, come in a little yeah. bit and yeah. cruise out, yeah. and it was really loose, right? Like there's not like a pretty loose, and there, it wasn't like there was like business like there is now. Mm-hmm. You know, are you what kind of business owner are you? Are you like a real like? Uh, are you like a real like you got to keep your hours? Oh, like I'm you're such a calling. I'm such a hard ass. I'm yeah. like the meanest, probably the meanest person. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> Tyler's told me you're the absolute worst. We both don't know where he is at right now. He said he, 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 he said he maybe would come with me from Vegas back here. Like he'd get it, but then I didn't hear. Right. But anyway, he's probably yeah. wait, he's probably waiting for you. For he's probably pickup. yeah. <laughs> he's like, where are we at, dude? <laughs> I thought I was going back with you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so everything is, everything's always, it seems like, uh, everything's always been kind of like, at least scheduling wise, right? I know you take tattooing very, very seriously, obviously. Um, but I think like scheduling and like that kind of stuff or like where you work or everything, everything's very fluid. It seems like, right. I just, I've never liked someone up my ass. No. You know, I'm like a really like. I like to treat people like, you know, if, if you're not fucking up, you know, just dude, your your own person, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dude, police yourself. I don't like policing people. Right. I don't like, like to me, being a bot is not a, like an ego mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So many people, it's like, you know, if you own a business, to be like, it shouldn't be a status symbol. Right. You know. Yeah, I agree. So, um. I, so I just try to like live my life and worry about tattooing, yeah. worry about like doing nice tattoos, worry about doing right by my clients, worry about doing right by the shop mm-hmm. because that's, that's the important thing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It, 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 and it's crazy that I say it's crazy. It's crazy because like we all know people that run their shops like a, like a nine to five, like you got a clock in at this hour. You got to wait, even though we're sitting there and, and there's no tattoos being done. And we know nobody's going to walk in in the next 20 minutes to get a tattoo. But we got to sit there with our bags all packed. All right. Watching that clock. Right. Because I've worked at shops like that. And we're all right. just like, cool. We good? Yeah. Like, can we roll? Yeah. Because like, that, that two minutes made a huge difference. What the hell? You yeah. know? And also, also, if everybody's done, like, you're done. You know? Like, don't, yeah. like... Why are you gonna try to force somebody to tattoo that last little like somebody comes in at seven fifty eight? You yeah for, it for what? Eight. Yeah, well, it's that because it's not gonna break, make or break anything. Well, make or break anything, yeah. it'll kill somebody's soul. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I mean, my thing's always been like, if you're here, I want you to be here. Yeah, you know, I don't. I want you here if you want to be here. Right. But, you know, I'm not gonna make you want to be here. Right. Yeah, it's like yeah. you need to motivate yourself. Yeah, in you tattooing, you have to be mo- a self-starter. Yeah. yeah, you need to be motivating yourself to create. You need to be motivating yourself. to. You need to keep yourself in check. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not my job. I'm not your fucking dad. Right. You know, I'm your friend. Yeah. You know, and I want you to do, be doing nice tattoos. I want you to be inspired by your coworkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why you work at a shop. You work at a shop because you want the, like the the experience of like right now i'm just working like at a private studio because of covid it's a lot harder for me to travel i was doing full-time traveling for tattooing and uh it gets kind of hard because i have like a little spot in my my office and i'm doing my appointments and it's cool um but it is hard not getting that experience of like being around other tattooers and other people it's it's such an important thing yeah i think it's it's super it's super tough, man. Like, it's like, but that's what you want. You want people that want to, to be there, to be creating, to be talking about each other's tattoos, to not like, Definitely. you know, like, it sucks when you work with people that do a tattoo, wrap it up, and see you later. Right. And then, you want to be, you just you do? Wanna, I saw yeah. the drawing. Yeah. The drawing, we were talking about the drawing. Like, it was so sick. <laughs> yeah. It's like, did you fuck it up? Because yeah. it's cool. Because that like, happens. Yeah. No, I know that. I'm like, the, yeah, they, they, can't, they can't all be winners, right? Yeah, right. 
Mm-hmm. They're like, I'm going to toss a ton of Vaseline on it. Yeah. Oh, it's too shiny to take a photo. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> uh, uh, Schmidt and I were talking about today uh, doing before and after pictures. The before will be a piece of clean skin. Mm-hmm. And the after is just going to be with uh, the chicken, <laughs> yeah. the bandage on Amazing. it. Amazing, <laughs> yeah. Did this one super proud. <laughs> yes. Super <laughs> stoked on this one came out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. What was one of your first tattoos you got? Oh, God. I see some biomech sh- shit on there. Well, it's under this this clown from Tyler, it's under a few layers. Oh, sick! Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Oh, yo! What's that? What? Who did that guy up there? What this crazy art? Yeah. That's some Dan P original art. This is, uh, I drew it. Uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, Walt. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I think it's Walt. Walt or Will? This guy from Florida. Mm-hmm. Ted is incredible. Tattooer. That's crazy. Yeah. What else you got on there? You got PMA. I see uh, PTY. That's for, that's for Panama City. Yeah. A little PMA. AA. A little, uh, ancient art. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, a whole bunch of other. That's stuff. crazy. You got a fork? You got a fork? You got, you got a, big a knife fork? And yeah. Yeah. Sick. So you know, eat your heart out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all part of Dan P's. Uh, who who did this like biomech stuff right here? What's uh, that? This, so I, just, uh, I was tattooing myself back in the day. That was then, you. Oh, uh, under here, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Micah Micah Cottle. Okay. Uh, I think he's at American now. Yeah, he's a local guy. That's cool. Incredible, incredible tattooer. Did some of that way back in the day. So yeah. Don't judge him on this. No. Yeah. Yeah, man. What other uh, what other gems do you have? Mm. Oh, what's that? that? What's that guy under there? That's oh, a uh, David, David Robinson. Mm-hmm. Man, that's cool. Yeah, he's Super in cool. Denver now. Killer guy. Where does he work out in Denver? Uh, I think it's what at Till Death. Till Death. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's sweet, man. Yeah. This is all uh, Mike Davis back in the day mm. in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Do you ever work out in San Francisco or anywhere else on the coast? Uh, I spent some time in San Francisco for a little while. Yeah? Was it Cold Steel? Cold, Cold Steel. Yeah, it was more like a piercing piercing spot. Uh-huh. I had a couple of tattoo shops. Wow, yeah. Yeah. So I was there, definitely. Different scene. Yeah? yeah. What kind of scene was that? San Francisco scene. <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco and piercing. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. kind of get it. Yeah, but I mean that was weird because I was uh, I was coming there from Florida and I was used to making like you know being oh, real busy. Yeah, and you, I'm working in some place that was a new shop that had no real you know they're known for piercing. Yeah, not known for tattooing, and you know they had other tattooers and there were maybe like you know had come up in San Francisco. Had been around for longer than I was. I came from out of town. Yeah, there was no kind of a walking deal. There was no way to really promote yourself at that point. Yeah. So, you know, I'm making enough to get myself drunk every night. Yeah. And get tattooed. Yeah. And pay my rent literally, and that was and that was it. it. Which is probably like way better than most people are doing at that time. I'm like, even now. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 I know. I know how uh, how San Francisco used to be, man. It used to be crazy. I think it's still crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah. What else you got? I don't even know. I feel like I've I've I've, I've learned a lot about you. Yeah. Huh? Oh, it's been forty-three minutes. Well. I don't know, Dan. Thank you so much for sitting and talking with me. It's awesome. it's it's awesome to to learn a lot more about you, to learn uh, how this beautiful shop came to be, how you came to be, and all the the wonderful stuff you do. Um, do you want to do you want to plug your uh, your dice? Hey, you sure, do definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you guys are uh, aren't familiar at all with uh, tattoo paint roll, mm. you check me out on Instagram. It's something just a project that I started a few years ago. Yeah, it's a really fun project. Um I've done uh I've done a video, I've done a couple of the the dice rolls and like 
um, done drawings based off of those. It's super fun because it like kind of gets your mind out of like the regular, you yeah. know what I mean? I, I, I like it because when I started doing it, uh, obviously having concept, but then mocking them up, like being like, so stuck in the mode of tattooing you have, like, right. you were really familiar with the imagery, but having this like combination a random combination of images, you know, makes you kind of resets me anyway. and gives me a new, like, Oh, like an image will pop into my head yeah. and I'll think of ways to combine them that I wouldn't necessarily before. Hmm. And yeah, it's more of like a, it's a good way to, for just a good mental exercise and just get the juices flowing. Yeah. Definitely. You know? Yeah. Cause I'll, I'll do like one of those or like I'll roll the dice and see what it is and sketch something. And it's, it's super cool and it's super taxing on your brain. So, and then after that, I'm like, yeah, I kind of just want to like revisit some flash. You know what I mean? Like you kind of do that. You're I don't like, want to really draw. You're like, man, this is like, this is like hard to figure out how to like make these things work together. But, but, but they're you... cool. Also, I mean, you could roll one dice and then have someone pick from uh, Owen Jensen flash. Yeah. You know, like, oh, it's a, it's an eagle. Yeah. Yeah. You for know, sure. Pick yeah. An eagle. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's cool too. I've done them straight five dice yeah. every single time. We'll see, yeah, you see, like, you're, you're going hard. That's hard. You're, you're going all in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's fun because you come out with like some interesting, some crazy weird shit stuff. that yeah. you would never Super ever fun. create. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely cool to like check out and to like kind of, uh, kind of like work out that creative muscle. You know, like definitely. yeah, yeah, it's super fun, man. Well, thank you so much for uh, for talking to me, dude. It was super fun to like learn everything about you dude great great talking to you eric yeah man, thanks so much right on man thank Appreciate you. you thank you buddy